So I came to a rehearsal. You were very kind in letting me come on in to, to sit in a rehearsal and just got to see what you were about, see the choir sing through the repertoire, and you sounded so good. We're fine with the rest of the song. I think, yeah, and the rest of it's pretty like, let's do a okay. metronome. One thing is, oh, no. uh, we have to remember that some people are going fast. And so, and so I walked away feeling really excited to write something because I felt like, you know, the sky was the limit. I was like, this choir can do anything. And it's so cool to have something commissioned, to have someone th be thinking of the choir while writing the piece. That That's so special. We got to see the lyricist. They were so cool. It's just to hear the process. We don't get to hear that. And, you know, we were at a loss when it came to asking questions because we were just like, this is, this is an experience we've never had before. We're recording this beautiful piece that actually has yet to receive its premiere um, by Kenyon Duncan. Today was so awesome because we got to record a brand new piece written just for them by a composer that I barely know, but I already really love. His name is Kenyon Duncan, and he wrote Corea Lucis for us. It features Esteli Gomez on soprano and our choir doing like pockets of aleatoric singing with also sections of dance and these like powerful sections of beautiful homophony. So the piece starts just before dawn and kind of takes us from that, that moment where light is just kind of bursting onto the scene through dawn and through to kind of the middle of the day where the light is bright, the sun is overhead, and caps us off at the end in a, in a sunset, really. Um, and so it's, it's a lot to do in just a couple of minutes. I'm really excited about his piece just because I love it, but also because I hope that other people commission Kenyon. It's so his voice, but it also has so many beautiful seasons. Like, there are so many color choices. It manages to be a really through composed, it sounds like a true voice that he has, but still manages to have all of these different color shifts and things to explore. It was a lot of fun to write, honestly. I went for a walk um, and just started singing to myself and kind of that's what, that's what came out. I think Kenyon's piece is really special because we don't do a lot of like ostinato individual stuff. Um, and so finding your own voice within a bunch of other people surrounding you, that's, that's difficult, but it's also kind of like freeing. I mean, the lyrics are like, that's what he, you know, everyone, every individual comes together to create something. So Especially as a soloist, I don't feel as though I'm kind of boxed in to just one style and only supposed to do kind of, okay, you must be very, you know, only sort of pure sound or only warm kind of spinning sound. It's, it's, there's an encouragement to do both. Esteli is incredible. It's amazing to get to see her work through the piece and work with the stuff that's on the page and also to work with the choir. I feel like they had a really cool chemistry in the room. So magical. I mean, the joy of collaboration, honestly, because I couldn't have done it without coming to the choir first and hearing from you all. It's been such a gift to just be able to give a piece that and see you all rally around it um, and make it into something that I could never have imagined. I'm reminded of how amazing we each can be as individuals. Sometimes it's very, it's very easy to lose sight of that. There are so many things, so many distractions, honestly, that are constantly asking for our attention as people, as brothers, as sisters, as artists, as musicians. And I hope that you can keep that spark and grow it, tend it, cultivate it. It's, a, it's like gardening, you know, you've got you to tend your dreams, you've got to tend your hopes.